Okay. Now, this next uh, type of factoring is, is if you have a number out front. Let me see if I can make one that's nice. Um, So if you have something like this, I always try GCF first. I try to take out a 4 or something. I can't take a damn thing out of here, right? Because a 5 messes me up. I can't take anything out of this. So somehow, I've got to take this into account. Um, and the reason this is more difficult is because how do you break up 4? It could be 2 and 2. It could be 4 and 1. And then how can you break up six? It could be six and one, it could be two and three. So one way to do this, and the way that I would suggest against, unless, again, if you're really comfortable with numbers, you can kind of work out your own way of making this quicker, um, is just try something, and if it doesn't work, try something else, and if that doesn't work, try something else, and if that doesn't work, try something else. And that sounds maybe familiar to some of us. This is one place where it's actually a valid method, and it's actually called just straight up trial and error, which will drive me insane if I did that on some of these. Um, but 4 could be 4x in x, right? That would make 4x squared. And 6 could be, I don't know, 3 and 2, right? And then in the middle I get 2x and 12x, that could never make negative 5. Okay, let me try something else. So that is a method you could use. I highly recommend not to. Hopefully you guys can see. Some of you guys can do this method. If you're pretty comfortable with numbers, you could actually do several things to make that quicker. That all depends on how comfortable you are with numbers. It's not really possible for me to teach you comfortableness with numbers. Right? That's what I'm trying to get you through doing other things. So let me show you a method um, that I was shown. Uh, it's called the Surefire method. Believe it or not, I was not shown this in Georgia. Is this the chapter? Yeah, this is the next section. Um, six, three. six three, I think. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it's called master product or some other weird thing. And that's really the name. It's not just like a joke thing. I mean, like, that's what they would, they would call it, like, a book, but that's just, like, their school name for it. Surefire method. What is happening out there? Surefire method, yeah, that's the method. There's actually, the one I actually use is not this. I, I use one called the Texas Slide, which now it just sounds like I'm making shit up. But. Texas Slide? Yeah, it's not Country Line Dance. So, <laughs> you guys are getting kicked out of this. Let's... Let's do this. Let's investigate. I, want, I, want, I really want to show you guys why this method works the way it does and why it's got to be something like this. So the only way to get something like this, something that has a, not a one out front, is to have, um, and we're going to kind of do like we did earlier. We're going to do some multiplications first. So factoring is undoing multiplication. So when I'm not sure what the hell to do, I start with multiplication and kind of keep track of what the hell happens. So... The only way to get something that does not have a 1 in the front is to start off with something like maybe 4x and 3x. Now that's going to have a 12 in the front, right? You guys with me? Okay, cool. And then, I don't know, whatever else we want in there, plus 5 minus 2. That sounds awesome. So let's keep track of what goes on here. Remember, we did this earlier when I was trying to show you guys, and we did that a lot about uh, why we got to get product, because that's what it is. They multiply to be that last number. They add to be that middle number. So look what happens here. Um, first, I get the 12x squared like we talked about. Then what? Minus 8x. Plus 15x. Minus 10. Good. And, of course, something just has to happen kind of coincidentally. 
Now, is, is five, now, let me see if I can get you guys to focus. What are the two numbers at the end? What are they? The two numbers at the end, five and negative two, right? Those are the two numbers we're always kind of focused on, or we have been focused on up to this point. So that's where the negative 10 comes from, obviously, right? The product of those two. What do I get when I add five and negative two? Three. Three. I don't get seven, right? So it's not the same as it was before. What threw me off? Why don't I get seven? Because the poor five and two, they get multiplied by four and three. You guys see what I'm saying? So let me see if I can show you a little. If I just had uh, x plus five, x minus two, if I just had that, nothing in the front, just the just one out front, then I would get x squared minus 2x plus 5x minus 10. I get x squared plus 3x minus 10. That came from these two multiplied. That came from these two added together, right? Because 1 times negative 2, 1 times 5, it doesn't mess with my middle term. Here, 4 times negative 2, 3 times, it messes with my middle terms. It throws my middle turn off. But here's the neat thing. <laughs> what is 12 times 10? 120. 120. And negative 120, really. What is 8 times 15? Those two I got in the middle. Help me out. 120. And it, and it sh hopefully should make any sense. The, the 8 and the 15 have parts of the first number and parts of the last number in it, right? And so when I multiply the first number 12 and the last number 10, I should get the same thing I multiply when I multiply the two that I had in the middle. If you think about it, the 8 and the 15 have the 4 and the 2, they have the 5 and the 3, they have all the parts of the first and last numbers in them. And so when I multiply the actual first and last number, I should get the same thing there. So here's the bottom line here. Now, obviously, hopefully you guys understand the way I normally work. This is why the process works. So the more you understand about what I just said, the more you understand about why the process works, the better it is, because the better you'll understand the process and you remember it. If you don't understand a damn word I just said, <laughs> which would be bad, but let's, let's see if anybody's, you can still do it. You can still do the process. So here, here's the process. Here's how this works. Um, coming back to our original problem. So... Considering that this times this had a way of factoring it to be this and this, right? 12 times 10 is 120. One way to factor that is 8 and 15. I don't need factors of this to add to be this. I need factors of 4 times negative 6, negative 24. That's my first step. My first step is take that first number into account. I've got to multiply it by the last two. You guys semi with me? And again, why does it make sense? The whole thing I just said about that first number messing my middle terms up, it does get multiplied in. So the first thing I do when I'm trying to work backwards is I multiply that in. So I can try to work back to what the middle terms would have to be. So now I don't take 6 to get a 5. I get to take factors of negative 24. What factors of negative 24 make negative 5? What factors of this make this? Eight and three. Which one's got to be negative? Good. The bigger one's got to be negative. So there's the four. So it just becomes x squared minus five x minus six. Kind of sense? No. So it's two x minus eight, two x plus three. No. No. Really? Really. Really. And that's and it's okay. That's not a bad thing to try. But if you actually checked it, it wouldn't work. Okay, so, coming back up here. This is kind of messy now, but if I put numbers in front, when I FOIL, it's going to mess with my middle numbers, right? When I FOIL it, it's going to, those products are going to mess with my middle numbers. So I could never take factors of negative 10 that add to be 7 and actually have it work. I have to take factors of 120. I have to take that 12 into account because it's going to mess my middle numbers up. Yes, ma'am? 
So when you do the 12 times 10 to get the 120. Then you try to find factors of that of that make that 7. That. 120. Oh. What you just said, yeah. And that would be 8 and 15. Now, looking at this, we're basically trying to do this in reverse. Here's the main idea of the surefire method. And uh, anytime you learn something brand new, you've got to give yourself time to absorb it all. So I haven't thrown everything at you yet. So just absorb, right? I, I appreciate some of you guys trying to get ahead and trying to see where it's going to go, but hold on. I want to do exactly what this thing did. I want to make four terms now. Flush, flush. What's so good about four terms? If I have four terms, what can I do? Group them. And grouping is relatively simple. It's just GCFs. So we just figured out two numbers that multiply to be 24 and add to be negative 5. Negative 8 and 3. So what can we do with that? We can break up the middle term here. We can kind of do this thing in reverse. 7 is negative 8 plus 15, so I can break that up. I'm just kind of trying to do what happened naturally here. I'm trying to make it happen in reverse. So how can I break up negative 5? I want to rewrite this whole thing. 4x squared minus 8x plus 3x. I want to use the numbers I just figured out there. Minus 6. So I just rewrote this whole thing. There's the 4x squared. There's the minus 6. Where's the negative 5x? Right there. So that's what Surefire does. And, if, and, I, I, and I've talked a hell of a lot. How much work have I actually done? Not much. So that's the other thing to realize. When I'm first showing you a method, I'm going to be talking a lot. And some of you guys are going to be like, holy shit, what's involved in this problem? The actual work, I haven't done much work here. 4 times negative 6. Got the two numbers that worked. Broke up the middle term. That's all I've done. So once your fire gets it to four terms, you can group, like you said. Yeah. So on, on the, the problem right above that, at, at 120? Yeah. That's all you did there. Oh, oh, oh. Right there. That's all you did really as well? Well, remember, on this one, I started with the answer. And then I multiplied it out and tried to follow what happened. Okay. But where did the 120 come from? What, what, what did that come 12 times 10. Yeah. Yeah, 12 times negative 10. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I remember how to get it. And why, was it and why was that important other than that is what it is? Why was this one important? Let me, let me show you again. You do another. It's not my favorite place to be there. But. I mean, is is this basically all you're doing is breaking it down? Like, if you looked at a whole number and you said that this is 72, and you had you had seven tens and two ones, is that what you're saying? No. Um, look here. If I let me make another problem. There's a few of these I know that work right off the top of my head. Um, I have a question. Yes. So is the other one there yet? The four x. Not yet. No. No. Actually, this is when I'll I'll Which thank this. All right. Let's take a step back. Um, we'll do this one next. But I, I, what I really want to do now is just do another problem like this. Let's really, let's really look at where things come from. So how do we figure out how to factor something like um, this? How do we figure out how to do this? We looked at several multiplications that would lead to something like this and kept track of what happened and came up with a process to work back. We say, now, multiply to be this, add to be this, right? And look, what's out front? One. What's one times ten? And so I can argue that we've always been doing the same damn thing I'm doing right now. It's just one never changed it. One times ten is ten. So it never really showed up until now. So in order to get something like this, I need to have, you know, a number and a number that's not one. You with me? So now the first number is definitely not going to be 1. Let me not make it so disgusting. Let me make it 5 and 2. And then let's say plus 3 plus uh, 2. Or right, let's make this, yeah, 2 is fine. Just stay. We doing okay? All right. 
So again, why am I doing this? I, I, uh, in order to figure out how to go backwards, I want to observe a process forwards and just see what happens. So then we can figure out how to go backwards when I want to try to figure out how to break this thing up. Start with something already broken up and just put it back together and see how it gets put together. That's exactly how we figured out how to do this. So it's very simple. I made up problems like x plus 7, x minus 4, x plus 9, x plus 3. I, and I, I knew those would come out because x times x is x squared. So now what kind of problem am I going to write to investigate when the first number is not 1? Things that have first numbers that aren't 1. And then multiply them together. See what happens. So when I multiply these together, what do I get? 10x squared plus 10x plus 6x plus 6, 11. So I get 10x squared plus 16x plus 6. Now, there are no factors of 6 that add to be 16. Are you with me on that? So immediately I can see, I, this does factor, but the only process we know so far fails me immediately. I would, I would, if, I didn't, if I was kind of naive about this, I'd say, well, I can't do this because my process doesn't work. Well, my process isn't working right because it's not right for this kind of thing. There's a number out front. Where did the 16 come from? It didn't come from 3 plus 2. It came from 3 times 2 plus 2 times 5, right? These parts of this number multiplied by parts of my last number. So I got 10 and 6. And sure enough, what's 10 times 6? 60. So, and I got 60 as a bad example, but oh, these two will always multiply to be what these are because that's where they came from. They came from parts of this and parts of that. So it makes sense when you multiply them, you should get the same thing you would get when you multiply those. So what does it all boil down to then? In order to do something like this in reverse, I have to take this number into account from the beginning. I can't get factors of 6 that make 16, but I can get factors of 60 that make 16. Right? 10 times 6, taking the 10 into account. It's not fair to ask him to make this. Because that's not what happened this way. Parts of this went with, so that 5 went with that 2. Parts of the 10 went with parts of the 6, right? Do you guys see what I mean when I say that? 5 and 2 are parts of 10. 3 and 2 here are parts of 6. So that 5 went with that 2. That part of the 10 went with that part of the 6. That part of the 6 went with that part of the 10. That's where the middle terms come from. So in doing this in reverse, the only way I could figure that out is to take this 10 into account from the very beginning. 10 times 6 is 60, and then find factors that make 16. So, so, round the heels of that. What's the first step? When I see something like this, three terms, no GCF saving my ass, what's the first thing I have to do? Yeah, I've got to take this into account. 6 times negative 10, negative 60. I think we did this one, uh, one like this earlier. Factors of 60 that make 11. So negative 60, Four factors nine. that make 11. Four. Yeah. 4 and 15. Which one's got to be negative? 15. 15. Now the part that people don't like about this problem is the next step you have to do. You're used to being able to write the answer immediately. And I told you earlier, the minute I make that first number not a 1, it's going to be a little more complicated to cover for all the possibilities. And the really nice thing that saves you from trial and error, which is try something. If it doesn't work, try something else. If it doesn't work, you better be keeping track so you don't try the same thing twice. Oh, shit. Right? Better than that is just break the middle term up and group it. Grouping will force it to be in the right place. So I just proved that one way to write negative 11, and I didn't prove it, but one way to rewrite negative 11 is negative 15 and 4, right? So I can, I can rewrite this whole thing. The 6x squared is still there. The minus 10 is still there. But how do I rewrite negative 11x? Plus 4. 
Yeah, yeah. We're good. Plus 4x. Don't forget the portal x, dude. Minus 15x. So, in reality, I haven't done much of anything. That's still freaking negative 11. Yes, sir. Can it be um, minus 15 Yeah, either way. Either way. Doesn't matter. And we'll do it both ways real quick. I think I've done a problem both ways with the grouping. I think somebody had a question about that. And the thing that was on the inside was on the outside the other way around. It, it ends up in the same place. So it does not matter which way you put that. And now you just attack it with grouping. So the really nice thing, I mean, you multiply, then you do the exact same thing you have to do for the other kind of problems. Factors of that, that add to be that. So you already have some practice with that. The only thing you have to remember is you can't jump to the answer now. You have to break the middle term up. Now how do you group this? What comes out of this? Two x. Good. A two and an x. Careful. Three. Three. Good. Two. Because the x is gone. Now out of here, I know I've got to take out a negative. Negative five. And it's going to look like the same thing. Thank God. It's got to. In fact, if you're able to find factors of this that add to be this, then it will work. And that's part of the reason why it's called surefire. If it's factorable, this method will always work the exact same way. That's why it's called the surefire method. So if I take a negative 5 out, this becomes 3x, and that becomes positive 2. And I know I'm good, like you said. Those are the same thing. So the last step, yeah, 2x minus 5, either way, 3x plus 2. Or the other way around is fine. So it's really, there's two extra steps on top, and we should expect it to be harder because there's more possibilities the minute you put a number here that's not one. There's more things it could be. The grouping forces these numbers to go in the right place. It's nice. What the grouping tells me it's going to be two and three, not six and one. I don't even think about that. I just let the grouping do its thing. Yeah, but sometimes your 15 and 4 can be in the wrong place. That, no, that's not possible there. It's not? Wait. Let's do it the other way around. If I would have written this... 6x minus 15x plus 4x. If I would have put those the other way around... Yeah. What comes out of here? Yeah, you have to rewrite it. What comes out? 3x. You have to do exactly what we did there. Snap, you can't do 3x. 2x. Minus 5 plus... 2 no x comes out here, right? Those are the same. Same thing. Notice here how the 2x minus 5 is on the inside. Over here, the 2x minus 5 is on the outside. That's cool. So whatever way you put the middle terms, right, in case you're curious about what the hell I'm doing right now, we put the 4 first and the minus 15 second. It's completely arbitrary, right? You could put the 15 first and the 4 second, it would still come out to the same answer. It has to. What happened? I don't understand the coffee part. The other part? Yeah, the bottom From part. where? What happens to one of the, the 3x plus 2? All right, watch. Um, okay. So... If I have, um, how many A's are there? One. Well, what can I do with that A? How many A's does it look like there is? There isn't. We know there isn't. We know there's one A that went to both things. So now we're just doing that in reverse. There is not two 3x plus 2's up there. You could think I'm as crazy as you want to think. There's one 3x plus 2 that was distributed to the 2x and the minus 5. I'm just taking it back out. That's all. That's grouping. That's that last step in grouping. So, um, now that I've torn that up, let's see. I kind of feel 
that are over here anyway. Let's try a few of these out together, and then I'll let you guys try one out on your own. Yes, that's a good idea. Which first one? The one that was 4x2 minus 5x minus 6. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's look at that fresh up here. Draw lines back. Look at this one fresh. So the first step here would be. Yeah. So you see the first number is not a one. So you know you have to do this. Now the surefire method says if you find two numbers that multiply be that and add to be this, it will definitely work when you group. That's what surefire says. I want you to realize something real quick. There are tons of ways I can rewrite this and have four terms. Negative 2x and negative 3x make negative 5x, right? 8x and minus 3x. 20x and minus 17x. I mean, uh, where are we getting that? 20x and minus 25x. I mean, there's a lot of different ways I can get negative 5x to show up. There's only one way to break that up that will make it work for grouping, and that's when I get the two numbers here. So, of course, what two numbers multiply this and add to be negative 5? Negative 8 and 3. And like we just said earlier, it doesn't, that's the pair that will work. It doesn't matter which one is first and which one is second when you rewrite this. I just want it to end up being negative 5 at the end. So I rewrite the whole thing. That's 8x. Good, don't forget the x. That just gives me the numbers that go in front of the whatever the hell is here. Plus 3x. Minus 6. Minus six. Cool. So the really nice thing, if I take a 3 term and make it 4, I can group. If I just do that in general, I will probably not make 4 terms that will work. Right? Grouping requires everything to be come out the same. That little guy get the, and, and at the end of each has to be the same. So it's very restrictive. That makes it so that that'll happen. So I'm guaranteed now my grouping will work. So out of here comes 4x. Four. Four and then x minus 2. Good, x minus 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. x comes out. Plus 3. Plus three. x minus 2. Yep, 4x plus 3, x minus 2. I figured out the 4x and the plus 3. So, you know, the way I want to teach gets me in trouble a lot. Because I, I really want you to understand at a more deep level why things work. I could certainly just tell you, this is a, these are the steps, here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. Okay, do it. I hate that. But I get in trouble when I want to show you why it works, because that's painful. And you guys are human, you don't like pain. So I don't blame you for pushing back. But I really just want you to understand why this works. It has to make sense somehow. It has to. And I can always, I'm not going to do it on this one, but I can always make X something. And this would be a number. And this would be a way to factor that up, which is kind of neat if you think about it. All right, let's try. Uh, here, you guys try one of these on your own. Um, and maybe, I don't have any more in my head that I know works, so I've got to make one that works. So watch how I make it work and see if you guys can figure out. Um, <laughs> watch how I make it work as I figure out how to make it work. This, this is going to be kind of gross. Yeah. Yeah. That's yummy. Can you check it? That's how you check it. You just like plug in some of the and then see if it works. No, it was, that is sort of one way to check it. 
but you want to do at least two values. Because you might pick a value that just happens to work, and then no other value works. So this would have to work for every value of that. That's a way to check it. So you, you pick a couple, it works for two. That's pretty good. I mean, the numbers look a little daunting. Let's see. They come out kind of nice. You multiply it out. So let me catch up to you guys a little bit. What's the first step? Well, the first step really is GCF. Does anything come out of all three? No. If an A comes out, that kicks ass, because then it's the easier type. Nothing comes out. Crap. So A times negative 25, negative 200. Now that's a, a much better number than it could have been. I mean, that's not too hard to figure out a few ways to break that up. And you want a way to break it up so it comes out to be 46. So I need two numbers that somehow add to be 46. One of them is going to be negative, so they really subtract to be 46. Yeah, 50 and 4 work. So again, you could start with 46 and say, you know, like, um, what, Jeff? 60 and 14 makes 46. Right? But that does not multiply to be 200. So then you can take a big step down, negative 50 and 4. Well, that will, hey, cool. Right. Will you always be the lucky nobody? That's another way you can kind of do that. Okay, so, yeah. Oh, never mind. Just, uh, you're subtracting only by the multiplying the job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you got to multiply to be 200. And basically, they have to subtract to be 46, because I know one of them's got to be negative. One's got to be positive. That means they're going to subtract. So 50 and 4 do the job. So how do I rewrite this? Yeah, good. So like this has got a bit of a twist. And in general, if I have a choice, I would put the negative here and the positive there. If there is a negative and a positive, because then I'm not going to make that negative mistake I can make over here sometimes, right? If they're both negative, oh, well, screw it. i got to put negative there. But you guys kind of with me there? And, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter which way you put it, really. Um, so we have a question. What comes out of here? 2x. Yeah, 2x. 4x. 4x. Good. 50 divided by 2 is 25. The x is gone. What's the only thing I can take out of this? One. That just makes it look a little bit better for the next step. So always do that for yourself. If the only thing that comes out in a grouping problem, if you have this and it only comes out one, do it. Because now I can see what the next step is. Yeah. How would you get negative 25? You're cool with the 2x? Yeah. 50 divided by 2? Because oh. when I take something out, I divide it out. Because when I put it back in, I multiply it in. So I'm taking it out, so I'm doing the opposite, I'm dividing it out. Because okay. when you check it now, that does become 50x. Okay. Yeah. So the last step, these are the same, thank God, so I'm allowed to do the last step. If they're not the same? 
If they're not the same, you made a mistake. Or it's not factorable. But considering it, this is a surefire method. It has to be factorable. Right? So that, that means you made a mistake. So if you had like a plus 25, then you messed up on your sign somewhere. Right? Okay. So what's the last step again? 2x plus 1. Alright, 2x plus 1. 4x minus 25, I love it. Or, you know, 4x minus 25, 2x plus 1. Whichever way you want to go. That is what 50 times 4 is. And that is where 50 and 4 came from. So that is a middle dude. It's what I get from these to help me figure out how to break that middle term up. So it's sort of like, um, you know... If I have a much easier problem like, like this here, then I, then I can see everything. 30 would, it makes 11. What would that be? Numbers that multiply by 30 have to be 11. So 5 and 6, isn't it? 5 and 6, I like it. Thank you. All right. So you can see the 30 still there. The problem here is that 200 is in parts of this thing split up because I've got the number out front that's not one that means that parts of that are kind of split up amongst the whole thing it's not as easy to go see parts fit in there does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Right, good. so obviously this times this is negative 25 but is this plus this the middle? hell no and we, we hopefully understand why that is now. That, that would not be fair. This crap messes me up. So if you check, negative 50 plus 4 is negative 46x, right? That's fair. And that's the whole reason why this method is difficult, is because parts of this interact with parts of that. That's why the very first thing I do is take that into account. I'm going to break that 200 up and get the parts that I need. Okay. So I never claim that something's easy. I just claim that something does make sense. You just have to get there. Um, here, let's try out another one. I'll give you one that's not as uber ugly as that one. thinking about it, if you've never heard of this method, I'm about to say its name, it will definitely sound strange. Have you ever heard of a method called bottoms up? And I'm talking about math. I'm not talking about anything except math. No, good. If you ever see it, uh, have somebody want to show it to you, tell them, get away from me. <laughs> right. I always tell my students, and the ones that have seen it, now all of you want to see it. Let's do that. You won't see it from me. It works. It always works. If you ever see it and you're able to explain to me why it works, I will let you use it. It hides all the math in it. It just suddenly the numbers go in the right place, and there's no math to it. There's no grouping. There's no anything you really do. Right. So, too bad. So if you ever learn that method, just realize if I see it, I'm not giving you points for it. All right. I want to see you doing a method that actually has you thinking involved in the problem. Why do you learn that? Just in case people know it. Oh. Just to warn them that I don't want to see it. Yeah. Of course, in the process, I've got everybody interested in it, but we're going to have to do it. So if you're able to explain it to me. Google Yeah, be careful if you Google that. Be careful where you are. Yeah, right. And when you Google that. Would you like to turn on the This is 
got a little more manageable numbers to it this time. Hopefully not as evil. Again, we can't jump straight to the parentheses. You've got to break up the middle term to the grouping. We got it. So what's the first step here? Five times four is twenty. Factors twenty make twelve. Two and ten. It tells me how to break this guy up. Five m squared plus two m plus ten m plus four. What comes out of here? One m. Good. An m. Good. Two comes out. And I know I'm on the right track. So in the last step. Yeah, either way. I love it. Either one you want first. Grouping is called grouping because the first thing I do is group it. And then two and two. All right, so I get this group and this group, and then I only focus on that group. Normally, GCF requires everything to be involved. Grouping says, no, I'm just going to involve these and involve these, and then I'll look at everybody. Right? But like if you do the problem right, and you're always, the whole point is to always get to the It's the same thing there and there. Exactly. Otherwise, you cannot go any next step. There is no step that would come from it. And that's when you said you did it wrong, or it could yeah. not be factored. Normally, it's a negative mistake that happened. Like you took a negative out, but you forgot to change the sign. Mm -hmm. That's the most common thing. The next common thing is not taking out enough stuff. Right? Leaving something in there and just not, and they're like, oh, crap, they're not the same. So make sure you take everything out that you can. Um, OK. So I'll tell you what, I want to do a little preview of something to come, and then we'll head out. It's just a preview, right? <laughs> hey, you've seen some of my previews go along. Let's do that. Um, all right, so this is all news here, but help me out. It's going to lead into the next idea. And obviously the next idea should be we did four terms. We just did three terms. So next thing should be two terms. What could what could it be? So you're like, well, you got three terms up there. It's because I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm trying to get that direction. How would I factor this? X minus one. And they both have to be negative to make positive 25, right? And to make right. negative 10 when you add them, is that cool? Yeah. So the middle term is there. It's a weird way to say it, but the, there is a middle term because they didn't cancel, right? So just imagine if I did not have a middle term. Do you guys see what I mean when I say that? That's one reason why you might have two terms is because the middle term is gone, which means it would have canceled in the foiling. If the middle term canceled, that must mean that there's different signs, right? Are you guys with me so far? So, the cool thing about this one, I need two numbers that, um, no, that's x and x. I need two numbers that multiply by 25 and add to be 0. x plus 5x minus 5. So you know the two numbers have to be the same number. And they have to have different signs so they become 0, right? So that's why the only way this would work is if both of these were squares. Yeah. Right? 25, I, this worked. Because 25 has a 5 and a 5 in it. So then one of them could be negative and one of them could be positive. You with me? If I put x squared minus 14, what number times itself is 14? Square root of 14, I don't know what the hell that number is. So I would basically say that's prime. Because we always want to factor using nice integers, whole numbers. I don't want to factor using decimals or rationals, irrationals, right? 
So this is called a difference of squares. And a difference of squares, I also call it a thank God problem. Or thank whoever your favorite deity is for that day. Right? It's called a thank God problem because all i got to do is break everything in half. Let me show you a couple more examples and then we'll head out. Let's see. So if, I, if I give you one that's got just a little bit more stuff in it. Now it's two terms. So it can only be squares, or the next thing we're going to talk about is cubes. So it can only be one of those two things. Is it uh, any GCF? No. And I know which one it is. It's squares if I can break things in half. It's cubes if I can break things in thirds. And when I say break it, I don't mean if I break nine in half and get four and a half. I mean multiplicatively. Nine is three times three, right? You with me? Everything can be cut in half, so it must be a square. So the, the kick-ass thing is the minute you see two terms, you can cut everything in half, you do that. 9y squared, cut it in half. 3y, 3y, m squared. M, m, minus, plus, you're done. That's why I call it a thank God problem. If you make everything the same, different signs, what's going to happen with the middle term? Minus 3ym, plus 3ym, no middle term. It's almost too easy, right? I told you two more problems, just the second one, yeah. If it's always add or change the sign of the second? Yep, it's it, minus plus or plus minus, as long as they're different signs, you're good. Cubes and then that have three groups the same No, no. Cubes will have one little group and one big group. Oh, yeah. That's coming up. All right, here's the last problem of the day. Uh, so i got to make it lift. 